Welcome to Edison TV. I'm Catherine McQueen and I'm here today to explore the ambitions of Edison client Provaris Energy, the Australian company set on developing safe, sustainable and efficient export supply chains for green hydrogen. At least 20 countries representing around 70% of global GDP are developing hydrogen strategies as key elements of their decarbonisation plans and that is likely to translate into more than 5 trillion US dollars of investment being needed for new supply chains through to 2050. All this points to exponential business growth in the hydrogen sector. Enter Australia's Provaris Energy, which is planning to be the world's first market-listed provider supplying compressed green hydrogen by sea into the high-demand hubs of Asia and then Europe. At the helm of Provaris is Managing Director and CEO Martin Carolan, who joins me now from Sydney, after which we'll be hearing from Per Rudd, the company's Chief Technical Director. And I'll also be talking with Edison analyst Andy Murphy to share his expert insights. First, welcome Martin. Very good to have you with us again. Thanks, Catherine. Can you remind us of Provaris' mission and where the company is currently focused? Yeah, so Provaris is developing a portfolio of integrated green hydro projects. And by that, we're developing and investing in profitable projects right across the value chain. So we're leveraging our innovative compressed shipping IP, which you'll hear more of today. And we're looking to retain equity positions in those assets over the long term. So key to that plan is to become the first mover of bulk scale compressed hydrogen shipping. And that's going to enable efficient regional supply chains for green hydrogen to get up and running before that demand profile beginning before 2030. So the company is on track to achieve that goal in 2026, where we're developing both IP and project opportunities in Asia and Europe across the value chain, both in production and in transport. So in Australia, we're producing and moving product to Asia. And we're assisting large renewable energy developers and, and companies in Europe to, to deliver into Europe. Can you tell us about the business model, the separate projects and how they integrate? Yeah, so the model is unique. So we're combining both green hydrogen production with compression and then storage and transport using our proprietary design for shipping. Uh, first of all, compression is a proven method both for storage and transport onshore. So it's not, it's not new technology, but our approach is a way that can be more economical, particularly over regional distances that alternative carriers simply can't match. So importantly, the capital and required for construction of both projects and ships will be backed by long-term charter or take or pay contracts. And so that's similar to the way the LNG market developed um, you know, many years ago, small scale, long data contracts, fixed cash, fixed cash flow. And we think that's gonna be attractive to long-term investors looking at, at assets that have strong uh, ESG credentials. Can you share with us how your discussions are progressing with partners? Yes, Catherine, I think, you know, partnerships are an important role for companies like Provaris as they accelerate our path to commercialization. They also increase our, our development companies' credibility and future bankability. Uh, so we are in discussions with, with companies across Europe, Middle East and Asia. Um, they are vendors across infrastructure uh, ownerships or different parts of the value chain. And all of them are now starting to appreciate the benefits of compression. You know, compression will enable these green hydrogen markets to get into both the production and deliverability in a shorter time frame. So we expect to make more updates around partners and collaborators in the balance of 2022. Now, one example recently is Northern Marine. So Northern Marine are part of the Stena Group. They are a technical and ship operator. Uh, such a collaboration of a globally recognized ship manager like Northern is very much an endorsement of our compressed hydrogen carry and design. Uh, it's an indication of the commercial potential of this new class of carrier, given you know, their core business is, is being a ship manager. Uh, and together now we're working together on commercial opportunities and the intention is for Northern to provide us with new build and technical services and then ultimately they pick up the uh, management services. Also in discussion with our 2.8 gigawatt green hydrogen project here in Northern Australia called the Tiwi H2, we are in discussion with commercial partners about uh, investment, offtake, uh, development. Uh, that, that asset is looking at development of 100,000 tonnes annually of, of hydrogen for export to the Southeast Asian markets, which include 
Singapore, Korea, and Japan. So we are seeing interest in the Asian market around collaboration for our own projects as well. Martin, can you tell us about the scale and timing of the commercial opportunities that you're working on? Yeah, so we've announced two hydrogen projects that are under development here in Australia, and both those projects are targeting Asia. The first, as I mentioned, is our own Tiwi H2. We've just completed pre-feasibility and we've launched an environmental application. It's targeting an export of 100,000 tonnes in 2026. So we're actually fast tracking that project through to an investment decision late next year and, and production targeting 2026. The second one we have is, is a larger 200,000 tonne scale opportunity. It's with a large European uh, developer based on the west coast of Australia. Its, its timelines are a little more uh, further out at 2829, but it's part of a, a, a large scale 100 gigawatt uh, level of, of projects under development in that part of, uh, of Australia. In Europe, we've seen an increased awareness of both the company and compression. So we've been um, transitioning quite quickly into pre-feasibility level studies with a number of proponents. Uh, all of those projects range from demonstration scale at 10,000 tonnes per annum right up to two to 400,000 tonnes. So again, you know, projects looking to be operational in 2026, that means they need to make investment decisions you know, late next year, early 24. Uh, to, to meet that development time frame and be in the market to meet the demand which is now starting to appear be you know pre-2030 and beyond. So compression offers you know a low capex modular way of getting these projects to market and building and building markets. Finally, how do you see the next 12 to 18 months? What are the priorities for Provaris? Yeah, I think you know, we're very confident that we can make an impact in the early stage of what is a very large market. Uh, so right now, there are no other bulk scale compressed hydrogen carriers uh, being developed. And so we're in the box seat to take advantage of that first mover advantage. I think energy security is driving the need for, for more efficient uh, and competitive delivery solutions uh, and solutions that don't require significant advancement in technology or investment. So, so, you know, I think you'll see evidence of compression becoming more mainstream uh, in the next 12, 18 months. You'll see announcements through partnerships, collaborations. You'll see evidence of projects being um, developed uh, in Europe using compression. So what we're trying to do is focus on those corporate development opportunities which have you know, the best bankability and credibility. Uh, and I think that's the value proposition for investors in our company over the next 12, 18 months. It's such an exciting prospect, Martin. Thank you again for taking the time to join us today. Thanks, Catherine. Per Rood. Provaris's Chief Technical Officer is in the engine room of the various projects involved and Pears joining us from New York today. Welcome, Pear. Thank you, Catherine. It's great to be here. Your responsibilities cover the green hydrogen production, the ports and the ships themselves. Can you give us an idea of the technology at the heart of the project in terms of transportation? Yeah, for sure. The, the company has, has more than 20 years of experience and expertise when it comes to gas and compression. Uh, and that's what we've leveraged now in order to develop a, a, a novel technology and a proprietary ship design for, for a, a gas carrier to carry large volumes of, of hydrogen. Unlike the alternatives that are out there right now and, and alternative developments when it comes to hydrogen, is that we're just going to carry it. As a, as, a, as a pure gas and not convert the hydrogen gas into a liquid or a chemical state. So we're not introducing any capital and complex and, and energy intensive processes in order to just to convert the hydrogen into a carrier for the transportation leg. So the compression allows us to deliver the hydrogen in the gas form that most of our customers are, are requesting. And for that purpose, we have developed a, a very extensive class level design package for our ships. We have a, a approvals in principle in, in, in place with, uh, with, uh, with the classification societies, we're in the detailed discussions with the shipyards, with, uh, with, with flag states, and we're getting all ready to, to commence negotiations here when for, for, for shipbuilding towards the end of the year and have ships on, on the water to transport hydrogen by the end of 2026. There are alternatives to the technology you're using in what may become a race to market for hydrogen distribution. How might this impact your plans? Well, com compared to the competition, 
the, the compression that we're using just allows us to mobilize the production and loading solutions a lot quicker than, for example, liquefaction, ammonia, or, or organic carriers that, that are being discussed at the moment. So the scalability then further allows, you know, off takers, our customers, the opportunity to sign up without having to make long, large and, and, and long-term commitments for large volumes. Can you tell us more about your plans for the European market? How important is Europe for Provaris? Oh, Europe is a vital part of the equation for us right now, and, and we expect it to be important for a long time. Uh, we're super excited to be opening up our European head office, and, and we've chosen Oslo and Norway for a number of reasons, and not just because I'm a native Norwegian looking to move home. You know, Oslo has a long history when it comes to shipping gas. Uh, you have ship owners when it comes to LNG, LPG, and other gases. You have equipment suppliers and engineering companies all in Oslo. And we want to leverage the expertise that's already there to help us grow in the coming months and, and years to come. Setting up a, a, a European head office makes a lot of sense right now. Uh, the, the EU is, is, is really aggressive when it comes to, to, to hydrogen both for production, 10 million tons per year, but also imports here in 2030 of 10 million tons per year as a target. We want to take a big price of, piece of that pie and, and get into that market. And we have the solution that can make that happen from 2026 onwards. Well, best of luck with the office opening pair and Provaris's ongoing journey. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Gethin. So we've heard the latest news from Provaris, but how does Edison see the investment opportunity for this highly ambitious company and its integrated projects? Andy Murphy, Edison's Director of Financial and Industrials, is here with us to share his thoughts on the company's valuation, where it stands in the market and its growth potential. Welcome, Andy. Hi, Catherine. It's nice to be here. Provaris is keen to capitalize on the opportunity that its vertically integrated green hydrogen solution offers. How have you put a value on the company? So in order to value it, we set about setting up a couple of scenarios. So we modelled out what the uh, returns would be from a 430 tonne ship and also a 2000 tonne ship. And once we worked these out, we did those under two separate scenarios. So that would have been a flat pricing scenario and a more, a more realistic scenario, which would have been a uh, declining, a deflationary environment. Uh, and we ran through the numbers on those, the, the smaller vessel, gave us internal rates of return on average of about 12% and the larger vessels a much more attractive return of 16 to 17%. The company is unique in the world of green hydrogen transport solutions. What are the main points of interest for you? Well, with this particular company, you've got a company that's going to be generating clean hydrogen, it's going to be compressing clean hydrogen, and it's going to be transporting clean hydrogen to places where the demand is from places where the energy is being produced. So what this really means is that you've got a, a company that's going to have a production, compression and transportation solution, which, which will solve the problem of the energy being produced in one place, but actually being consumed in a completely different part of the world. And the, the compression and the shipping solution there, uh, which also um, provides a, a the clean emission free solution because the hydrogen production is going to be powered by green energy compression will be green, the ship propulsion will be green because the vessels will be powered by the hydrogen itself when the, the hydrogen is finally used in a disparate part of the world. That combustion will be completely greenhouse gas emission free as well. Now the success of Provaris' strategy is not guaranteed. What are the potential risks that could stand in the way? Well, we don't really see them as risks, more as obstacles to, to overcome. So the first risk, risk, as I see it, is developmental risk because this, this solution is, uh, is untested. It doesn't exist anywhere in the world, so it's novel. So that's the first, first point. The second point is the market risk. We don't know yet whether there'll be the demand for, for the hydrogen in, in 2026 when the first cargoes will be available. Uh, and finally, there's the risk of finance in terms of the, uh, the finance for the, for the vessel, so the project financing, whether, whether that will be available and what the cost of that financing will be. But, in a nutshell, you know, this is a super exciting opportunity. Um, as, as I've already said, you know, the, the, the opportunity to solve a problem that is perhaps obvious to some and not, and not obvious to others. In other, in other words, you're able to transport this energy from one place to another, uh, completely emission free, is what makes this project so super exciting. Thank you, Andy. Of course, you'll be following Provaris 
carefully as they navigate their way through an uncertain but potentially game-changing mission. Absolutely, we will. And that's it for today. If you'd like to know more about Provaris Energy, read our initiation report and updates and follow their stock. Do go to www.edisongroup.com forward slash Provaris Energy. Thanks for joining us. Until the next time.